Hi there. So uh, this is just a little bit of bonus lesson, I guess. Um, it was a little much to go into during week seven, uh, but it is something that I think will be useful to you in week eight. I know it will be useful to you in week eight and beyond. Um, you do really want to understand uh, how an unpacking loop works. It's possible that you have managed to not use unpacking loops at all in your homework yet, and that's okay. Um, but I think that it's it's a valuable thing to understand. Uh, and the other part of it that I want you to understand, uh, and this goes out especially to the people who have used unpacking loops, is when it is maybe not the right choice. So what we are going to do is we are going to set up a list and then before I run this, uh, this is what all of this down here is, uh, I want to walk you through what is going to happen, what an unpacking loop of a list actually does, really an unpacking loop of any iterable item. Uh, we have set up our word list. It has a bunch of different kinds of trees in it. Um, when we first get to this line, when the interpreter first shows up here, of course, it checks to make sure my word list exists and has things in it, and it does. So it starts unpacking. Word becomes, on the first time through the loop, a variable that holds, it. well, it, yeah, becomes a variable that holds, I think is a correct way to phrase that, the string oak. Uh, now, our loop is only one line long. All it does is print that variable, which holds the word oak, so it prints the word oak with a space after it, and we go back up to the top of the loop. And the interpreter asks itself, is there a next item in my word list? And there is, pine. So the second time through the loop, this variable is overwritten with the string pine. We print it. We print a space. We come back up. Is there another item in my word list? There is. Okay, we will overwrite this with the third item, in this case, maple. We'll print it and so on. And that is how we go through a list with unpacking. So we are not accessing these items with their indices. We're accessing them kind of directly. Well, we're accessing the values directly, and that is really the key here and the part that, I, that you need to understand. Um, this is a temporary variable that keeps getting overwritten as you go through the for loop. Now, we use them a lot, and they're pretty good. Um, there is one place where you cannot use them, or you, you can, but uh, only if you're really careful. Uh, when you need to change the items in the list, let us say that we want this, instead of being a list of individual trees one by one, we want them to be plural trees. Instead of oak, pine, maple, we want oaks, pines, maples, and so on. We could try to do this with an unpacking list, right? Uh, so we go through, word is overwritten, word becomes word plus s, and we print it, and it looks like it works, but let us go back and print word list at, in its own loop. This is just our standard pretty printing, the same loop we did up top. Uh, let us print what is in word list. It is not plural, right? That is because this is a temporary variable that holds the value of the item in the list. It is not actually pointing at the item in the list itself. So uh, if we want to change the items in our list, uh, we have two options. We can build a second list, totally valid approach, uh, or we can access each list item directly using its index and change it. Uh, we're gonna, res well, we're not really resetting our list. We're reminding ourselves what's in our list. Uh, and now we are setting up an empty list. This is, by the way, option one. I'm showing you how to loop through a list and build a second list based on that list. Um, my plural list, we hope at the end, holds uh, the plurals of all of these words 
in order. Oaks, pines, maples, rowans, cedars, walnuts, and sycamores. So we loop through with our unpacking loop that it is a totally valid way to do this. We can unpack into this temporary variable and we can use this temporary variable, which we have added an S to, and append it to our second list. Totally valid approach. Um, and then we can print to make sure that it actually works. So we are just pretty printing our plural list here. And that worked. Now we did not change the items in our initial list, but all if, if all we need is, an, is a list with the items changed, we have succeeded. If it is vital that we change the item in our original list, we kind of need to go with option two. So here I've reset it. So well, it's again, not strictly necessary since we didn't change it yet, but uh, we have the singular trees. We are going to go through item by item. This time we are looping over a range of values with the same number of items in it as our list. So range from zero to length of my word list. And remember range goes to n minus one. Each of those numbers is going to get written into this temporary variable index. And then we are going to access the word directly by its index. So we are using my word list, which is our, our list, with the location of each item that we're looking at. And we're setting it to that plus S, writing over the item. So our first time through this for loop, this is going to be zero, right? That's, that's where range starts by default. So index is zero. So we're saying my word list at zero equals my word list at zero plus S, oaks. The second time through, it becomes pine equals pine plus S equals pines, and so on. And then to prove to you that it actually worked, we will pretty print our word list, the word list. We don't have a second list here, right there. These are the two ways I'm going to suggest as the only ways. There are probably, there are other ways. It's Python, of course there are other ways. What you might be tempted to do is to say, we don't need to make a new list or go through by index location, we have remove and append. And I see you, I see what you're thinking there. I too have had that thought. The problem is you can't add and remove items from an iterable as you iterate over it. So if you are iterating over my word list and you are also adding things to my word list and removing things from my word list, actually either one, you're going to miss items because what happens here Let's actually run this because this is really funny. So uh, we start with pine. So what happens is, uh, and pine singular at that, and then you'll notice sycamores uh, has a lot of S's on it. Uh, here is what happened. Um, and this is why uh, I recommend writing notes for yourself about what your for loop is actually doing as as you're thinking through it, or is actually going to do as you're thinking through it. Because what we've got is, so we've got my word list. We're going to look at the first item at, at the item at index zero, which is oak. We are going to remove oak. And then we are going to append, and append happens at the end, oak plus s. So oaks ends up in the list. Uh, that's fantastic. Good, good, good. Um, now we go to the second item in the list. Well, oak has been removed. So the second item is maple. Yeah, yeah, you see what's happening here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I would strongly encourage you not to go adding or removing items from lists as you loop over them. I will sometimes erroneously say, do not change items in lists as you loop over them. But if you're doing it like this, where you're going by index and you're not actually changing the order of the items in the list as you go, you're fine. 
this this is fine. This is absolutely valid. Uh, this is not. Anyway, I hope that that is helpful to you. And uh, please ask questions if you have.